I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm at the Mesker Park Zoo here in Evansville, Indiana, and we're going to be doing a video on the dietitians who prepare the food for all the animals here at the zoo. So, let's go take a look. So now we're here in the comments area with Nora and Gail. So, so let's start off by saying, like, what are y'all doing here? So right now we are making diets for our animals in the collection. Uh, so Gail over here is working on our larger mammal diet book. And so that contains uh, monkeys, our porcupines, bears, bingerongs, and other spammering for animals. And then on our smaller diet book we have our cliff stock, birds, you name it. So just both of us kind of combine together. We must have as much as we can in the morning, usually we kind of get done half the day. But we just want to get together, get as much done, and then we're here for the morning for the rest of the day. About how long does this take you to do? Um, usually it'll take a few hours, so three or four hours, depending on if anything crazy happens during the day. But usually it'll take three or four hours because a lot of it is tiny little cutting and prep work, depending on the animal size of the animal, what needs to be done. Uh, so it just depends on like what needs to be done. Because in some of these containers here I can see like, a bunch of like, really small chopped up stuff. Mm -hmm. And then over here there's a bunch of larger food items. Yeah, so some of the animals do need special care. So if you have smaller animals like birds or if you have animals that have a little bit more dietary needs, like a little bit older animals or have maybe some teeth issues, you do have to chop them a little bit finer compared to, say, our sun bear, who doesn't really need to have really, really tiny food, and you can just give them a whole lot or half an apple. It's a little bit easier. You have a couple pieces of, I'm assuming it's lettuce here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the purpose of weighing it? The purpose of weighing it is so we have pretty much exact measurements, because if we were just throwing things in, animals would get very heavy, or maybe lose weight if we weren't measuring out exact measurements. So we want to make sure we have everything down to a science. We do have dietary increases, decreases depending on the animal. Keepers here, we weigh our animals each month, maybe every couple of weeks, depending on that animal. We want to make sure that we're catering to the animal's needs. And so we do weigh them if we see something is going wrong, maybe the animal is acting off a little bit, we want to make sure we're paying attention to that. So we might look at that and say, okay, the animal looks a little heavy, his body, him, his or her's body position is a bit off, meaning that they look maybe a little bit rounder in some areas or a little bit skinnier. So then they'll come over to us here at commissary after talking to other keepers, talking to management, and we'll say we're going to change their diet up a little bit. So that's when we kind of move that around. And obviously enrichment is a huge part of captive animals lives. Yes. So how does that take part in the feeding? Um, most of the time it's us just going here. We really do try to stick to their diet because we don't want to mess anything up again because a lot of it, if you add too much like maybe food enrichment, that really isn't that great there because we want to make sure you stick to their diet, their diet's their needs. But you have the keepers coming down to us saying, hey, can you throw this in here for their diet just for enrichment? for something different, we're more than happy to do that. But you also want to stick to the how much you give the animal as well. Just you don't want to give too much. They're used to certain things. Their body isn't used to getting too many sweet things or whatnot. But then we do have special days here, special events, where people will say, hey, do you have enough time where you can make maybe popsicles or you can make some sort of fun thing for the animal or if you put things in our Tupperware or our bins over here will be bring to the diets for the keepers. So we do try to put different things in for the animals as well, but we also want to communicate with our keepers so that we're keeping on the right track for the animals. And of course, not every animal, like a lion um, or something, is not going to eat bananas and mm -hmm. carrots and stuff. So what would you do to accommodate that? Uh, well, so this side of the commissary is our produce side, but then on the other side is our meat and fish side. So when we're done doing all this, we clean up, we do start working on the meat and fish side. And but if we say you know we have a specific diet for all of our meat and fish animals, and so we do have those side or those specific diets that need to get done. 
if say we want to give enrichment or we ask that we give this to a certain animal, we will give say like some shrimp or something. Well, a lot of animals don't get shrimp that often, but maybe we say, hey, we've got a few pieces of shrimp, can we give that to an animal, see if they like it. If they don't, we know that they will eat it later. But yeah, some of those things we mix up. Our uh, otters, our river otters, do enjoy getting cherry tomatoes a lot. They do get a lot of meat and fish, but they also get carrots because they love carrots. But we do try cherry tomatoes a lot, throw them in their pool for just fun, so they get playing the pool with them. And then, pretty much every zoo has some like, reptiles and amphibians who are like, mostly insectivores. Why are they from all the wilds? I'm looking over here, I'm seeing some super worms, which yes. with all my animals at home I'm very familiar with. So, can we go take a look at your bunker? Yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. So, what kind of insects do we have in here? So, in here is our bug room, and so we have our crickets, our adult crickets to say. So, these two containers are the ones that are actually getting the fruits and veggies. You can see they are nibbling away, and that's just another so source of moisture for them. They do enjoy it, and so we have this, but then this container over there is the one where there is no fruits or veggies, it's just a gut loader, so it's the powder that they get before they're getting fed. And so it's a little more nutrients in them, so they're ready to be out and fed. So we have our big board over here just saying, okay, who gets what, how many of what, and then kind of directions on how to take care of the bug room every day. You know, we want to clean up if there's any dead ones in here, we want to make sure we're replacing their water containers, their food, and because, again, even though these aren't your typical, you're taking care of your bears or your birds or anything, they're still animals, you still want to take care of them, they are a food source. So we do want to make sure we are taking care of them properly. Because if they're not healthy, then the animal that you're feeding is probably not going to be healthy. Yes. And I see you're feeding uh, vegetables and fruits to these guys as well. Mm-hmm. And again, this is their uh, main uh, moisture source and so because we couldn't just put a container of water in there because they probably would drown in here so because they have really tiny legs and then we also have our pinheads our little baby crickets the little guys which is for the very very small animals so the mantella frogs that we have up in amazonia um, up in our discovery center area so the very very tiny ones that need something that small compared to the adult crickets. And so a lot of times we have to collect 250 to just 30 of those. In the back behind the door here we have some we have our, like Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Yes, Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Let's see if I can get one out. And so these guys, we're hoping that we can use them eventually. Where are you? But we just haven't had Quite as much luck breeding them, so hopefully we can maybe change that. We can give these out, just the little ones, out for feeding because it is a good nutritional source as well. And we also do use uh, earthworms and waxworms because waxworms are a great uh, nutritional source. Yeah, let's go look at probably the third, maybe the most important room where all the food comes in. Mm -hmm. Yes, the grain room. So now we're here in the grain room, and if you look around, there's a ton of bags of food. So what kind of like, animals would all these bags feed? Lots of them. Pretty much a good majority of the animals here at the zoo use this grain or kibble or biscuits for their diet. A lot of people just think when they go to the zoo they get fruits and veggies or peanut butter or something. A lot of these animals get this. It's part of their diet. And so, you know, the one right here is primate diets. And it's not just one bag of primate diet, all the primates get it. It's this one right here specifically for our new world primates. So that would be our howler monkeys and squirrel monkeys. But then our ones below right here, these guys are for all the lemur diets. But then we also have our big or our large leaf eater biscuits, which is for a very large or a large amount of our animals at the zoo, which is also for some of our rodents that get it as well, because it's a good biscuit for them to chew on and it does supply the nutrients that they need. So a lot of people think it's just one bag of grain that everyone gets, but everything is specifically for their needs, special ingredients that they need that will supply the right nutrients for them. If you move down here, we have the wild crow diet. Okay, and so this one 
Yeah, this, this is obviously looks like for the larger animals. Mm -hmm. So this is like typically got your hoof stock, and so this one is the wild herbivore high fiber diet. And so we have some of our different ones. We have a uh, high fiber diet, but then we have wild herbivore plus. And so like for this one, our camels are on this one. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head who's using this one right now. Uh, I want to say our kudu are on this one. But then our Wild Herbivore Plus, our tapers are on that, or our taper Huey is on that one. So it just depends on what nutrients that they need. Some of them may need the higher fiber for their diet um, versus something else that's in that other diet. And right here we have the least fancy looking bag of the bunch the uh, leaf eater food. Like which kind of animals would you get? So right now the only ones that are getting this are our prehensile tail porcupines. Originally, our DeBrazes were on it because it's gluten-free, and so we were noticing some issues with some of our DeBrazes, and so we were doing some tests, doing some work on them uh, for our veterinarians, and so we were saying, well, I think the issue is coming out is a gluten issue, or so gluten tolerance. So what we did is we looked around, we found that Marion, the company Marion Zoological, which is a pretty big company throughout the zoo world, and we found out that the leaf eater food is um, so one, and this is also lemur size, so a lot of lemurs will use these as well. Um, but this is one of the big ones that we use. But right now we're just using for our pants and tip pork ones. And then the final bag that we selected to highlight is the small bird diet. Mm -hmm. So those are two cans and small birds like this. Yeah, and so this one is our soft bill diets. And again, like we have an array of bird diets over here. Like this entire this shelf whole here. upper side is bird diet. So this one just happens to be the soft bill diet. And so our tangers, our curacao, or I think the ones are Malcoa birds. So some of our smaller birds are getting those, but there's also finch seed. There's our um, our fish seed, our small bird, other small bird diet that we get, but then we also have ostrich diet, which is a huge, close to 100 pound bag, which will, you know, get about, I want to say, five pounds of scoop of grain a day. And so it just depends who scoop it, but compared to that bag, it's very different kind of grain, very different type of nutrients requirements that they need for their diet. And so it just depends on the different what kind of area that they're in, what do they need for their project. What's one of the most interesting things about working in this facility? Um, you're always learning something new, I think. You know, if you think you've seen it all, whatnot, depending on how long you've been in working in the zoo, you always seem to learn something new, and I always enjoy that. I love getting to work with different animals, getting to just see how, what I can learn. And this is the first time I've ever worked in a commissary area, but I love getting to work with diets, it, even though it sounds weird, <laughs> work with diets. But I get to work with the food, like how I can kind of change it, what I can work around. But I love working with animals because I've worked with animals in the past. And But it's just a fun experience to kind of just try something different and then what I can do to help. Well, thank you so much for telling us about your job here and just the whole process of helping animals like, eat. Because mm -hmm. despite what people think, there's a whole lot that goes into it. Yeah, it's a lot more than just quick here's some food out there there's a lot of a lot behind the scenes of a lot people. of measuring yes a lot of observation mm -hmm. like they're getting bigger they have to work on that it's, yes it's a lot more than just tossing some food in correct well i hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode and as always i hope you give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to check out my instagram at cool as always i'll see you next week